Good morning, UCY.TV radio listeners. This is Lonnie Clark with the Age of Vision radio show. Today is Wednesday, where we normally do our interviews with activists and people that are out there trying to help save the world. And today I have the great honor and pleasure of interviewing Dr. Helen Caldicott. And I have to admit, I am totally excited. So without further ado, let me introduce you, Dr. Caldicott. Thank you for joining us. That's a pleasure. Is my, the pleasure is really all mine. Thank you. Um, so, look, I know you came recently. I really want to talk to you a little bit about St. Louis because I interview the people from St. Louis every Monday, or I attempt to get someone to talk about the plight that they're under. Uh, when you were there, what's your response to what? What do you think those people in St. Louis ought to be doing, and how ought they? You I mean like, what do you think they can do to help themselves? It's a well, they can't really. What What is required <clears throat> is for the federal government to step in, relocate all the people living adjacent and close to that radioactive waste facility. Uh, the radiation has leaked into their front gardens, their back gardens, into their fruit and vegetables. It's into the air. Uh, there's a fire approaching the radioactive waste dump underground, which could release much more radiation into the air, particularly like radon gas, which is a potent carcinogen. The rates of cancer in those exposed populations are much higher than normal. In fact, I think there's 62 or 63 cases of appendiceal cancer, cancer of the appendix, something I as a physician and a pediatrician have never heard of or encountered. Um, So things are very grim there. It's a public health catastrophe uh, that's been happening for many years actually ever since they dumped that stuff since the Manhattan Project began uh, in 1945 but something absolutely must be done now and the federal government needs to step in and say look this is we can't have this public health catastrophe ongoing we're going to move the people and then we'll try and do something about this radioactive waste dump and the fire What's the radius? So it's not, a, it's not up to the people. What do you think the radius would be on that? What, what Look, do you I, don't, I don't know. It, it's variable. Um, the stuff has leaked into Coldwater Creek, and a lot of people live adjacent to the creek, yeah. and the creek itself is very radioactive, plus the, uh, the soil adjacent to the creek and the vegetation. Um, we, we met a woman who lives... <coughs> just almost next to Coldwater Creek in a park and um, she's dying already. Mary I think of lung, yeah, of lung cancer. Um, so it's, uh, and there are a lot of people living in that area. Many of them are uh, African Americans. <laughs> so they put these dumps in areas of low socioeconomic status. You know, it's called ecological racism. But this is a very, very severe public health problem must be dealt with immediately. And the poor, the people, I mean, they've tried to get their senators and congress people on side. Um, the EPA has stepped in a little bit, making some silly comments, but it's not enough. I mean, this is, this an acute, this is an acute clinical emergency, and it must be remediated an immediately. Acute, acute clinical, you said clinical emergency, because, yes. you know, this is the interesting thing, because I, you know, last week was Earth Day, right, and I live in Eugene, Oregon, and I'm 60, so I was 15 years old when the first Earth Day happened, and it, I re- recall, because I was in high school, everybody walked out of class, we had a protest, even our teachers, the administrators, because the rivers were on fire, people stopped, everybody demanded we take account of these corporations destroying it and what earth day has turned into is a party and i was really shocked when i contacted the st louis earth day festival organizers and spoke with the uh, person who is the director of it there they hold their earth day festival 18 miles away from westlake landfill I was like, uh, don't you think that's too close? She's like, well, you know, if it was too close, somebody would tell us. I am 18 not- miles eighteen miles away? Oh, I think that's probably fairly safe, 18 miles right. away. That, that, yeah. that, that, that eases my heart because I was kind of yeah. like shocked. Like, So yeah. this is the thing. Uh, there are really, and is there, there's really nothing. I mean, the government, the federal government really has no intention of addressing this. Well, it has to. I mean, its responsibility is vast. 
Um, and these people are victims of the, of the Second World War, in fact. Um, yes. And they, <laughs> they, they, the federal government sends over a, a trillion dollars a year in weapons and, and armies to kill people um, and nuclear weapons and the like. And, and marching bands, if I may say, and all sorts of other things. I mean, America's stop, got to stop being a killing nation and it's got to be a nation that, that promotes life and not death. And at the moment, you know, about 65 uh, cents of every federal tax dollar that you pay discretionary tax dollar goes to the military-industrial complex. Well, I mean, you can't have a country that's threatening to actually blow up the world with nuclear weapons as Donald Trump talks about and Cruz and all the rest, and even Hillary Clinton sometimes. Um, and, and you've got no free health care virtually um, and no free education, and that's why I've been really pushing for, for Sanders, who's speaking the truth yeah. like FDR spoke. Well, your, your country's gone to the dogs, you know, and it's now run by corporations and not the people. Well, that's partly because people don't vote. Or, or decide not to. In Australia, we have to vote. It's compulsory or get fined. And, and it's, a, it's a, a democratic responsibility if you live in a democracy to vote. And then people, um, they think, well, they voted, that's okay. But, you know, what people have to understand is that the senators and Congress meet people are not your leaders. They, you are their leaders. Right. They're there because you voted for them. And they, they represent you, including the president is your representative. And unless you go and make friends with them, get to know them, uh, educate them, because most are scientifically and medically illiterate, you will not be represented by any by them. Um, they will represent the corporations who step into the vacuum you leave That's right. and bribe them and the, and the rest. So things have to change. And, and the only person who's speaking the truth in this area is Bernie Sanders and I I feel very strongly if he doesn't get elected we're doomed we're doomed from global warming we're doomed from nuclear waste piling up left right and center and epidemics of cancer leukemia and genetic disease and we're doomed from uh, the imminent threat of nuclear war which I'm about to write a book about Wow. well I agree with you completely about Bernie Sanders in fact I was talking about that this morning on my radio show I think he is the only rational candidate that we have and I to be honest I'm very uh, it'll, it'll be I'm actually going to look at where am I going to go how am I how can I leave the country if he does not get elected because we are going to be in a big state of yeah America. but the thing is Lonnie that, that that America's determining the fate of the earth and if you leave it won't make any difference America's deciding whether or not global warming continues it's deciding whether or not we're going to have a nuclear war Russia wants to disarm uh, and abolish nuclear weapons, and, and so do other countries, but America won't. If America doesn't change, we are doomed. So I, I would suggest that you don't leave, <laughs> that and you, Lonnie, start lead, fighting. You, you, Lonnie lead, lead a revolution. I mean, I, I led a revolution in America. I was an alien. I was a young doctor. How old was I? I'm in my 40s. And I came to America and almost I was working at Harvard Medical School. Everyone who I talked to said, well, it's better to be dead than red. And I thought, these people are absolutely psychotic. You mean you'd rather have a nuclear war? Yeah, we don't want to be communists. So I then organized Physicians for Social Responsibility and over five years recruited oh, 23,000 doctors and we had 153 wow. chapters and we started hold, holding symposia in major cities describing the medical effects of a bomb dropping on Boston and Seattle and the like and people woke up read the Boston Globe the next day and saw you know areas of vaporization up from five miles from the epicenter and the like and they said oh my god this is bad for our health in five years I kid you not in five years from 78 to 83 most people supporting the concept of nuclear war better dead than red. In five years, 80% of Americans opposed it. And we've got a million people in Central Park. That's the biggest demonstration ever in the history of America. That was a revolution. People, it was. I remember Sagacious it. and Gandhian. Yes. Now, you can do that, Lonnie, and you're an American. I was an alien. I wasn't even an American. 
Yes. I mean, this is exactly what I was going to ask you about. How did you organize that? So I appreciate that little bit of a background because that I, I am uh, friends with a Canadian named Thomas Ackerman. We talk about this. Like, how can we, we need to organize. Patty Amino from Pennsylvania says what we need is an anti-nuclear union. She thinks we need to, like, form some type of a union where we have a strong voice of committed people. Well, not just that, Lonnie. You've got to attract the attention of the media because the media is a message as Marshall McLuhan said but it's determining the fate of the earth and as Jefferson said President Jefferson an informed democracy will behave in a responsible fashion you've got a totally uninformed democracy if it's informed people become powerful so somehow you've got to work out how to put people who know what they're talking about including physicians because this whole issue of global warming, nuclear power, nuclear war, is actually fundamentally a medical issue. And get them on radio and television, start writing letters to the paper, op-ed pieces, deluge the media, do some really starry things that attract the media's attention, because they're very bored, the media, and they only like sort of blood and accidents and rape and stuff like that. But... You know, Greenpeace always gets the attention of the media, but you've got to do it on a massive scale. And I think partly women are the key, the golden key to survival. We have the babies. We're 53% of the population. We are kind of wimpish, but we need to step up to the plate and say, look, enough's enough. We're taking over now and making sure the children have a future. Yeah, it is time for us to step up. This is what I tell people. They ask me, why do you waste all your time? Like, all of my spare time goes to this. I'm quite busy. And I'm like, I feel like it's my responsibility. It's on our watch. We we cannot just let this government, you know, it's like laying down in front of a truck and letting it roll over you back and forth. Well, the other thing is that why make sure the children clean their teeth and get a good education when literally they have no future? So it's part of being a parent, a loving parent, making sure the children have a future and the grandchildren and all future generations, not just of humans but plants and animals. You know, I think this is part of the challenge, Dr. Caldecott. I was out at Bernie. Bernie Sanders happened to come here just yesterday to Springfield, yeah. Oregon. I took that opportunity. I made up some flyers to inform people about the harm that nuclear causes. And on uh-huh. my flyers, it has the names of our elected officials. So I actually was at school, and I ran home and got my brochures and handed out about 100 flyers to the crowd because Bernie's the How only. How big was the crowd? Oh, my gosh. It was the biggest thing I've ever seen here in Eugene. It was really? well over five, six. The place held 6, 5,000 people, and they were pouring in the street off of oh, four streets. The, the really? crowd was huge. Oh. Yes. And not one word of it on the television. It was just a little no. bit. No. I mean, they are, they, but the, you know what was interesting about the crowd? All of them, I said, well, what's, what, what are you going to do if Bernie does not win the nomination? They said, we're writing in Bernie's name. We're not voting for Mon- Hillary Clinton. I call her Monsanto mm. Clinton. We're not voting for yeah. Hillary Clinton. And mm. I, I think that the Democratic Party is going to be quite shocked at this because they think we're all going to step in line and vote for Hillary Clinton. Yeah. You know, I view her Yeah, but the problem is that Trump could get in. Well, you know, if everybody voted for Bernie, if Bernie ran now, I did hear this, that uh, Bernie Jill would Stein, beat Trump. Yep, yes. he'd beat Trump. Now, Jill nationally. Stein has offered, if he doesn't win, Jill Stein has offered to let Bernie run as president on the Green Party ticket if he doesn't win mm. the Democratic. Mm. So there's a still things up in the air, and, you know, it's not over till it's over. So I am Correct. an eternal optimist. I still believe mm. we can win the nomination. I think our mm. thoughts are things we can choose to make this work, and that's... I it. agree. I, I agree with that. So. And it might be a brokered convention. And the other thing is that Bernie wants to hang on and get as many delegates as he can. And those super delegates who are pledged to Clinton, they don't have to vote for Clinton, although they probably will if Bernie doesn't really nail down the the nomination. Um, but he, he can also change party platforms, um, and that's also what he's talking about. So, look, it, you're right. It's not, not over till the fat lady sings, so we'll see. That's right. That's mm. right. So, I mean, that is actually the whole big thing is really, I think with Bernie, especially with Bernie, what's going on with Bernie is that we've got this whole idea of him invigorating people, but we have to keep that movement going 
after the election so that people get engaged. Like my own senator, Ron Wyden, has already pledged his delegates to uh, Hillary Clinton. Oh, yes? Oh, yes. no. We haven't even had... Ron Wyden is not a progressive by any means at all. I mean, he mm. is not a progressive by any means whatsoever. Mm. Uh, but uh, Jeff Merkley has... He's been the only senator to endorse... to actually endorse uh, mm. Bernie, yes. And mm. so... I think I think once the party sees that we're not going to click our heels and get behind Hillary Clinton at the convention, perhaps that's where our power goes. I don't know. But I know that, you know, the national polls say that Trump will beat Hillary, um, but Bernie can beat Trump. Yes, Bernie actually beats Trump every single time. Yeah. yeah. So hopefully that will actually be really great. I mean, like, I'm actually... I think I think Bernie can win California and he can win Oregon. Yes. He'll win Oregon, won't he? Yes, he, he will win. I believe he'll win Oregon, hands down. Oregon, although yes. I, I live in a pretty, uh, you know, Eugene's a pretty uh, left-leaning city, so mm-hmm. my view is a little bit skewed here because I can't... I, mean, I don't know a single person who's going to vote for Hillary Clinton. I don't know one person. But you're not left. You're conservative because we're for conserving right. the planet. That's Destroying right. Destroying the planet is radical. So right. let's use the English language correctly. That's right. That's exactly mm. right. And it is not conservative to destroy the planet. And mm. this, this is the hard part, though. When I was out there at Bernie's um, event yesterday, people there really did not comprehend this is why I hand these flyers out. They have no comprehension of what nuclear actually really does do to you. They really mm. haven't got a clue. Mm. So it's kind of a sad, it's a really sad little place. Like I was, a, you know, I, this is why I made this brochure to give real facts and help people understand. They think that it's just, they're at, I've heard this so many times, and you may have heard this yourself. They say, well, it's just, it's just not that bad. It just doesn't look that bad. Mm. I mean, totally, totally ignorant. Aren't they? Yes, it is totally ignorant. It is really totally ignorant. And this yeah. is why, like, on my YouTube channel, I read these books. I mean, I'm doing all that I can to wake people up and to get them to care. Tom and I talk about this a lot. One of the things we've I've noticed in America is people just, they don't care. Like, I have three nieces that are under 35 years old. They all expect to be dead by the time they're 40. And they're like, whatever. It doesn't really, really? matter. Really? Yes. Really? Yes. They've given up. They have given up completely. Good Lord. Yes, and that's really? the... Yes, this is why on my show I say we talk about... We actually do talk about social engineering mm. because it's the social engineering that really is uh, the, the kind of the big scary thing of it all. You know? Well, you know what, Lonnie? Why did you get me to Oregon to give a big talk? That's a great idea. Okay. Um, you know, and a college can sponsor me and pay an honorarium and the like and give a big talk and absolutely pack the hall, and I'll educate them. Yet they need to be taught and inspired. You know who I'll they talk to, to about inspired. this? Is they do mm. need to be inspired. They need to be inspired to believe that they can actually yes, that's make right. a difference. Yes. And that is really... and. One of the things that I do quite regularly is encourage people to own their power and to believe in themselves because of course. people in America, at least, I can't speak to other nations, in America people are so downtrodden, so beaten up. Mm. I, I liken them to battered wives. Mm. And I've often said this on my radio show, there's no battered culture center to go to. We have to, to I mean, I'm a survivor of severe child abuse. So I mm. understand what it means to be in an environment with this, an abuser who makes you believe there's no out. Oh, but Christ. that is not, the, I think that's the gift that I was given, to be frank mm. with you, because I know that there is a way out. Mm. And life is worth living, and all of us matter, and it's a beautiful life that we have. And we, oh, it's a privilege, yes. And we have these whales. Uh, the day, last week, there was a whale that washed up dead at San Onofre, right on, right next to San Onofre nuclear power plant down there. Mm-hmm. And I mean, people are like, huh, that's interesting, and they walk on, and I have family in, in California still eating fish, still swimming in the ocean. I, I, I'm kind of stunned by it all, but the key is really that they just don't care. 
So we, I no, will take you up on that. No, it's not that they don't care. They don't know, Lonnie. Right. And education is the key. So why don't you make it one of your tasks to try and get me to Eugene next year and, and you know, other parts in Oregon will teach them. I will. That will. I will put that on my list of things yeah. to do. I'm going to speak with Mimi German, who I know you worked with when you went up to Portland, yeah. and I will ask her how do I accomplish this task. She's been a, kind of a great tutor for me. Well, um, you can go. You can go to the colleges yourself. But anyway, yes. put the word out. You never know what's going to happen. Well, I'm actually transferring to the university in the fall. I'm an older student. I went back to school when I was Good. 57. And I'm transferring to university, and maybe I can talk to the university that I'm going sure. to. Sure, the university is the place. Yes. Absolutely. Well, that is yes. actually. So, you know, Dr. Caldecott, many people are asking me, where does Dr. Caldecott live? When did you leave the States, or where do you live? Like, you know, <laughs> well, I'm a permanent resident of the States, and I spend a lot of time there. My family, my younger okay. sons there, and grandchildren. Um, I also live part-time in, in Australia because other grandchildren are here as well. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, I'm, I'm sort of a bilateral. Well, person. I have to ask, you know, the reason that people are asking, they're like, oh, my God, is it that bad that Dr. Caldecott left for Australia? No, 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 no. <laughs> That's no. like I, the... I, I would prefer to live full-time in America. I feel much more at home there politically. I know the scene. I know how to operate there, manipulate, teach, you know, inspire. Yeah. Whereas Australians are much more cynical than the Americans. Americans are kind of gullible, and they'll believe a lot of stuff. Um, Australians are, yeah, they're sarcastic and cynical. And also, I'm not so much recognised here. You know, I'm a tall poppy um, and have to be brought to heel. Whereas in America, I, I get much more attention, and that's excellent because then I can teach because I'm basically a teacher. Uh-huh. Yes, and you are a teacher. I mean, it's interesting. I, I have to say I'm completely thrilled to be chatting with you. I remember <laughs> driving down the freeway, listening to you on the public radio, talking about your fight to end the uh, n nuclear weapons uh, aggression. You know what I mean? You've uh. been after this for so long, and I think this is what it is. People are weary. and Like now we have leaks at Indian Point. We have leaks at Turkey I don't Turkey think they're point. weary. No, they're not weary. They haven't even started. I mean, do you want to know what weariness is? I worked as a Walter Mondale surrogate, you know, in the, his presidential campaign. I visited three cities a day giving lectures. That's weary. You, you they're think not it's weary. just they're just uh, blissfully ignorant? I mean, Well, what? blissfully, yeah, they're blissfully ignorant. In fact, we're about to publish a book called Sleepwalking to Armageddon about, you know, yeah. the imminent threat of nuclear war and it comes from a symposium I organized at the Academy of Medicine in New York last year oh, called yes. the yeah called the dynamics of impending nuclear war well, um, I think I owe you an apology for that one. I actually sponsored three people to go into it who were disruptive in the symposium. They kept wanting oh. to talk about Fukushima, and I, oh. and I was like, look, it's not that. They didn't understand that it was a real scientific symposium. It was awesome. I totally watched I actually watched it twice. It was totally... Uh. Uh, yeah. Extremely informative. It was yeah. really, it really woke, it really made me take notice of what is going on. And Good. I mean, this thing right now, there's a lot of, I mean, people, there's, we, we kind of have two fronts in this nuclear issue, don't we? We have like the nuclear waste and we have the nuclear war issues going on. That's right. And so this but is. But they're in intimately linked. Now, let me ask you this. Yesterday I was talking to someone. I am not a scientific mind at all. I'm getting a master's degree in Spanish, so that's just far away from my head. But I was talking to someone there who I handed a brochure to, and this person was quite hostile to me saying thorium is the way out, that thorium is great. Okay, so, Lonnie, go to my website, um, helencaldicottfoundation.org, and there's a section on thorium and a paper I've written on thorium. Awesome. And uh, and they can read that and know that absolutely it's not the way to go because thorium is not naturally fissionable like uranium. You have to mix it with plutonium or uranium-235, which is fissionable, to create another element called uranium-233, which is fissionable. And then so then you have to take all the fuel out and melt it down and concentrate it nitric acid an intensely dangerous process, extract the uranium-233 you've produced and then make a new reactor with that. 
It's economically totally out of the question. There's a byproduct called uranium-232, which is intensely radioactive, intensely dangerous. Uh, so it's not the answer. So that is not, that is not. See, I couldn't speak to it because I didn't know a lot of the language. Well, go I, to my website and read it, and then you'll I be will. able to speak I to will. it. I will. Yes. I will definitely yes. be able to speak to it. So yes. thorium, now this was another thing another young woman said to me. Well, the, the waste is not that big a deal because France has learned how to neutralize France the radiation. France has not learned to do <laughs> anything about it at all. Yeah, so I don't know where she got that from. <laughs> yeah, that's the interesting thing is that that is the one thing the nuclear industry does is spread misinformation pretty good. Oh, yeah, propaganda. I mean, oh. It is propaganda, and it's really, mm. it's kill, It's actually murderous. I call it murder. I think it's murder. Yes, I, I agree. I, 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 you know, I, I agree. It's long-term murder. Yes, and look, look at these children in St. Louis. Like, that's what got me going on St. Louis. I looked at their Facebook page. There was a picture of a child sitting on a hospital bed, and the notation mm. was, this was her last month alive or yeah, something. So and sad. I, and yeah. I just, I broke out in tears. As a mother, yeah. I'm like, I could not imagine. And what I cannot comprehend about the people of St. Louis, and I don't mean to be harsh about them, is, why isn't every single person that knows about this out parking themselves at Governor Nixon's office or parking, you know, putting their bodies in the street, being That's willing correct. to be That's socially right. disruptive? Yes. Like, Governor Nixon gets to go to sleep every night peacefully. They get to go and fundraise and do everything, and that's what kind of blew me away about the Earth Day Festival in St. Louis. It's like, it's a party. It's it, while the house is burning down, they're having a party. Mm. I, I, it's incomprehensible to me, but it seems to be mm. the attitude of many Americans of like, it's going to work out somehow, and we need to not worry about it. It's, well, Lonnie, you're a mover and a shaker, a, and a potential leader. So get stuck into it. Um. I'd advise you to go to my two websites, HelenCaldicott.com and HelenCaldicottFoundation.org. Plow through them and read every article there and you'll be much, much better informed uh, and you'll kind of know what you have to do. I think that's the thing and I would advise all our listeners to do the same thing. I'm always here for you to ask questions and the like and support you. Okay. Well, I appreciate okay. that because we really do. This is getting serious. This stuff is not stuff that's light. We actually really have to get more, many right. more people actively yeah. engaged. Because well, the whole country. Yeah, the whole. It has to be oh, the, the whole. whole yeah. But they need to, the one thing I found is they just don't have the information. They just it's like. Well, that's what we've been thing. talking about, and that's yeah. what I did in the in the eighties. Educated people. So. Let's join hands, Lonnie, and, and get to work, all right? All right, Dr. Caldecott. I really okay. appreciate you being here. So, okay. look, I really appreciate you, and I will let you go. And uh, thank you so much for your time on the radio, and I really That's appreciate my it. my absolute pleasure, and let's keep in touch. Okay, thank you, ma'am. Okay. Talk with you okay. soon. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. Well, good morning. I'm you. back. Hello? Hey, this is Lonnie Clark with the Age of Fission Radio Show. And uh, we, this, I am on the phone with Ed Oz. This is an unusual radio show today in that I got to interview Dr. Caldecott. The interview lasted for simply a half an hour. So I have uh, asked my friend Ed Oz to come on the radio show. You know, he, he does report, he's been reporting on basically... The last few times he was on, he was reporting on about the Disney, the lies of the Disney propaganda. And I thought it would be really appropriate on the heels of our interview with uh, Dr. Caldecott to share some information about how the propaganda machine actually works, how deep it is. Uh, when Ed and I, when I first contacted Ed about this, I asked him to do a little bit of research on like, I don't know, we were talking about uh, CIA-sponsored television shows. And he started going doing a bunch of research, and I'll let Ed uh, tell you about what he's found, but it kind of went down a, a rabbit hole, so to speak. So um, thank you for listening to the Age of Fission radio show, and uh, without further ado, let me introduce Ed Oz, uh, who is really an Hello, actively Lonnie. citizen. Hey, Ed, how you doing? I'm doing excellent this morning. Uh, <clears throat> it was great listening to you and Helen, and, uh, you know, I think this kind of folds into the nuclear issue 
because, and you even mentioned how much disinformation people have on the nuclear issue while you were speaking to Helen. Mm -hmm. And why is it that Americans have so much disinformation? I mean, you know, I mean, we come across things. I'm just going to go through a couple of headlines here. What I'm going to talk about today is the CIA, which was previously the OSS, and how the CIA, through a bunch of maneuvers, basically took over American media um, <laughs> and pretty much everything you've seen and okay, well, everything well, you hear. Well, let me interject let, but let, me, yeah, let, me give you, let me give you just a few examples of, of recent headlines. OK, yesterday a headline came out that said that the CIA accidentally destroyed copies of the Senate torture report and they accidentally destroyed them twice on two <laughs> different occasions. Yeah, two times. So um, that OK, then we found out that after 57 years of denial, it turns out that Nelson Mandela was sold out by the CIA and that's how he was arrested. Well, now, who cares? Story who cares? That happened, though. We, we all knew that it happened, but again, the CIA, the agency we pay, said, no, no, we didn't do that. And then they waited 50 years and said, oh, yeah, we did do that. And just a few weeks before that, we have declassified CIA report that said that the CIA director covered up the Kennedy assassination investigation, and the CIA's exact words are, we gave them the best version of the truth. Isn't that what Clapper did when he lied to Ron Wyden? I mean, the CIA, that's their, that's how they operate, isn't it? I mean, really, really. Exactly. It, 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 exactly. And I mean, it, it, you know, they're, they're a secretive agency, and that's understandable. Um, but again, they are kind of accountable at least you would think so. And then I looked into how the CIA was formed and why it was formed. The CIA was formed because, interestingly enough, of Pearl Harbor. Because Truman thought we got caught totally with our pants down at, 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 at Pearl Harbor and looked at all of the information that they supposedly had on the Japanese and said, we need one agency that's going to oversee all of this information so that we don't have some information over here with the Navy, some information over here with the Army, some Kinda information like with the president. With, that's what they did with the – don't you love this, the homeland? This is my thing. I, I put it out about two years ago on a radio show with uh, Tom Ackerman about – I said, you know, that I really think that the Nazis took over America. I don't think the Nazis lost the war. And one of the things I said to you yesterday when we were talking about the show today is it never even occurred to me, but maybe they started World War II just so they could infiltrate the United States government. I mean, that's well, a possibility. I, sure, I, think like you, that. I think you and I should I think you and I should do a show on that because because what happened is there was something called the National Security Act, okay? that created the CIA with the emphasis on the word central in its title. It was supposed to be a unifying organization that would write up all available intelligence and offer it to foreign leaders as well as the USA in a manageable form. The act gave the CIA five functions, four of them dealing with collection, coordination, and dissemination of intelligence from open sources as well as espionage. It was the fifth function lodged in vaguely worded passage that allowed the CIA to, quote, perform any other functions or duty related to intelligence affecting the national security. So basically, that gave them a mandate that they could do everything. And here's where it gets weird. Basically, the CIA Act of 1949 made the CIA's budget entirely classified. So the CIA's budget, except for a few times it's been revealed, Kennedy revealed it once, it was about $600 million back in 62, has been an entirely classified operation. Well, if that's not bad enough, the CIA is the only federal agency that can spend unvouchered money. You mean they have a, you know a, what that means? a blank check? Blank check. Wow. The CIA... Oh, out of every agency in the government, none can send out unvouchered money except the CIA. Wow. So the first thing the CIA did to assert their power over everything 
was they created another organization to spy on people, and that was the National Security Agent Agency, the NSA. Most people don't know it was created in 1952 by the CIA. Wow, they've come a long way, baby, man. They were messing with... And it, yeah, so history. from like 49, 47 they were created. 49 they grabbed absolute financial independence and control. And then in 52 they started the NSA to start spying on everybody. Hmm. And then yeah. in 57 <laughs> the IAEA joined the United Nations. 59 the uh, World Health Organization signed a contract to allow the International Atomic Energy Agency to oversee and censor any of their documents. So, right. wow. So right. within a decade, right. they pretty much, I mean, I am really spitting nails over, I read a story this morning about uh, the, the, they, they, some, the nuclear industry basically uh, had a hearing with the senators and told them that these new small reactors are going to save us a lot of money, that the cost of nuclear power is going to go down. Not one word talking about the leaks. After having gone out to Hanford and looking at how they are, Regard, regardless of co human health, life to any, uh, all life on this planet, they're out there dumping completely irresponsibly in the middle of our beautiful, beautiful desert. And God knows, St. Louis, any place that they want in this country, and they have a complete free hand. I'm, I, and the CIA, right. I mean, these people have no regard for human life. And our weak need senators continue to like wobble and be scared that they're going to get murdered by their own government. That's why they don't stop them because they're afraid they're going to be murdered by their own government. It's well, I want to read you. A, I want to read you a paragraph um, from a, um, an article in Esquire that was published yesterday. I want to read you the closing paragraph. And this was an article about the CIA. Wow. The intelligence apparatus of the United States has grown too powerful to be responsible and too big to be competent. The former leads to flagrantly anti-democratic practices, and the latter leads to a culture of ass-covering that does nobody any good. They commit their crimes, then they cover them up. They make tons of mistakes, and they cover them up, too. This happens so often and so consistently that the distinction between a crime and a mistake has become utterly meaningless. <laughs> That's so outrageous. That, exactly. And, and this is a national, well-respected magazine. Wow. Wow. Well, you know, I this mean, is the thing. Is, what do, I mean, it, again, <laughs> it's almost as if the whole thing has to collapse. I was reading an article this morning about Russia saying, you know what? The Russians in this article, where where was it from? I think it was the Guardian. I was reading. They were they reported okay. on a report from uh, the Vladimir Putin was saying, you know what, the Russians are taking it very seriously. The United States is lining a lot of its arms on the border of Russia. They're not. That is not oh, yeah. slip yeah. past them. And so this is a, no. our, you know, the CIA is out there instigating. In fact, you know, honestly. Well, remember, the CIA, the CIA is who dropped all the weapons in Poland right. to, to get Poland to fight against the Russians. Well, yeah. Well, I mean, that, that whole thing, I just, I just, uh, real, I, mean, I mean, and by the way, um, <laughs> you know, while we're out at, let's give a shout out to your listeners to go scan The Guardian as much as you can because it is really the last real newspaper sort of news source out there. I, it's, it's British, and they aren't dependent on advertising. They are basically run from a trust, so they can publish what they want. Um, so le let me just go through a list of a few things the CIA has done for America real quick. Okay, please do. Okay. The, the Korean War, they started the Korean War, okay, uh, and they used 1,500 agents to do that. Mm. Um, the Iranian coup d'etat in 1953, the CIA uh, basically took out the leader and put in their own leader. The Guatemalan coup d'etat in 1954, all done by the CIA. Syria in 1949, our good old friend Syria. Well, that basically, uh, Colonel Abu Shabab rose to power in Syria in 49 in a CIA-backed coup. Indonesia, 
The charismatic leader of Indonesia was President Sukarno. Uh, he was thrown out by the CIA. Uh, the Congo, a uh, Dominican Republic, Bay of Pigs, Cuban Missile Crisis, Indochina, Indonesia, Nixon. Did you know the guys who broke in on Watergate, this all gets forgotten in yes. history, were CIA agents? That's right. They were CIA <laughs> Uh, this is an interesting statement, Ed. This is one of the values of having these interviews like this, to remind people of the so-called forgotten history. People are forgetting that this is a slow, exactly. this is how abusers work. They are slow. Yeah. They, you know, they get you and they, they abuse you and then they leave you alone and they abuse you and then they leave you alone. And you sort of forget all the abuse that you went through. Like this business about, I have personally never forgotten that Clapper lied to my own senator, Ron Wyden, and said, we don't spy Who on knew he was lying? And, and Ron well, Wyden, exactly. Ron, Clapper knew the questions. Ron Wyden knew the answer. Ron Wyden knew that Clapper was going to lie to him. He knew that. And so... I, did I vote for Ron Wyden in this primary? No, I did not. You Me know, but uh, then again, Me you know, neither. Ron Wyden's a slam dunk. This is what happens in America. But you know, the the veil is coming out. You know what I mean? The, the, I, agree. I, I, I agree. I I I agree. We're seeing the rotting mess that this because really evil can only create a rotting mess. You cannot create harmony when you're just have no regard for life on our planet. The issue is it's getting urgent now. We have nuclear pollution all over this country. We have our government intent on nuclear war. They are lining up and doing something somewhere. Guaranteed. Well, since you since since you and I are both aware of this, and maybe some of your listeners are not, okay, and I want you to remind them, what did the LAPD tell about the CIA back during the hearings of Ollie North? Do you remember what the LAPD testified in front of Congress that the CIA had set up the crack cocaine market in Los Angeles? That's right had bribed them for access to bring the cocaine right. in. This was officer after officer testified to this. And what did the country do? Nothing. Shrugged their shoulders. Well, it's the same. It's the same thing. I saw some. Ad- then- <laughs> Look, in in two thousand and four, Ed, they were on C-SPAN. I saw a group of six Afghani women who came to the United States, paid for their way, was here petitioning our Congress to please make our military stop forcing the farmers to regrow the poppy seeds because the people of Afghanistan don't want to have heroin as a main product right. anymore. Our military and, and, was and, and, forcing and it, them to grow it. And, and, and if your listeners are skeptical, you, you can go online and find any number of pictures of our troops guarding poppy fields. Yeah, it's just in it's, Afghanistan. It's not. It's I mean, not a room and, and, and and the point the point I'm making with this, and then, and I think Lonnie's making too, is that you know I'd like to be able to connect what has the CIA done to obliterate our knowledge or to obscure our knowledge with nuclear. But since we know for 30 years that they run a probably the largest drug smuggling operation on the planet. And they have managed to keep that fairly well hidden. I mean, occasionally things happen. A CIA plane crashed last year, and it had, you know, 10,000 pounds of cocaine on it. And how I mean, many occasionally heard about look... that? You know what I mean? Like, nobody exactly. heard about that. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So, so, so we're, we're trying. We have an agency. While we're all arguing over, you know, and I'm totally with you, Sanders, Trump, and all of this, we have an agency that is running the country lock, stock, and barrel. It's called the I deep know. state. I mean, how bad is it when we actually call it something? It's called the deep state. People understand what that means now. <laughs> like that, that tells right. you how severe it is. It's not like, oh, well, we suspect it. It's actually got a terminology. And people just kind of throw up their arms and say, well, there's nothing we can do because they're going to keep. I mean, Hitler murdered millions well, well, of people well, with I the mean, help of their parliament. That's what happened. Hitler, well, Hitler people, didn't not, do it. Not only, human beings doing that. Well, that's that's the point. I mean, and, and, you know, people are all like, well, why can't politicians change things? Well, you and I remember what we saw. I firmly believe that Obama went into office expecting to make those changes he promised. And I firmly believe, just from his change in demeanor, that within the first two weeks, the CIA told him exactly what he could do. Yeah, he got a little knock at the door within three days. Somebody, I mean, Dick Cheney said that. Well, once he gets in office, he's going to have a different feeling. 
Uh, right, we're gonna have a little talk. Right. Uh, so, so, so you know, so the, and how do we get? I mean, you know, I mean, I know the, the the big issue here is nuclear, but how do we get our congressman and senator to finally realize we need to shut these fuckers down? I don't think we can get. I think they do know they need to be shut down. I mean, honestly, I really. Everyone has tried. Do you know from every president has tried to shut them down pretty much? Well, that's. Up until Nixon? That pretty Kennedy much. Kennedy tried to shut them down? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's pretty much what we're talking about, isn't it? That we are not in. In fact, my guest, Richard, Richard Mackinac, who was talking to me about. Uh, the uh, fracking out in Oklahoma. He, we kind of got off on a tangent on this one about how, really, we're completely. We have no control over any of the elections. It's all just a game and a sham. And I, I don't recall, but I think Richard told me he just doesn't vote because it's just like it's pointless. Although we kind of argued that point because I think we need to keep fighting. I don't think we should just okay. Well, so to me, you know, a democratic you, system. We ought to at least may force them to steal. If I'm going to go on Facebook. If I'm going to go on the radio like you, and I'm going to go on Facebook, and I'm going to speak my mind, I sure as hell I'm going to speak my mind in a ballot. That's kind of what I think. I mean, is. you know, that that's my attitude. It's just like, are my voice going to change the world? I Probably not, but that doesn't mean I'm going to stop doing it, because the truth is so ugly that while we're debating, you know, people are fighting over bathrooms and you know, insults and things like that, we have been swallowed. I mean, it's almost like the whole country is sitting inside the belly of the beast. Yeah, that's exactly right, Ed. I think that you're right. We are inside the belly of the beast. And, you know, the sad I mean, it doesn't take much looking at foreign policy, especially in the last 15 years, to know that all of it has been done by the CIA. Mm -hmm. That's true. I mean, there's no real argument about this. The key, the key is how 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 do we get uh, the people who are listening to this radio show? You know, a lot of people that listen to this radio show are really br brilliant people. Understand science a lot better than me. Really understand the political system. They really get it. And you know, many of them have called me and talked to me and said, "Look, man, you're be beating a dead horse. You're talking about the political system in the United States." Might be. I don't know what the answer is because we are in the middle of a collapse of a civilization, frankly. And we're in right. the middle, we're at the beginning of a six level e extinction level event. And in fact, you know, I am going to be interviewing a uh, an individual on Monday from St. Louis who I contacted. I saw a post of hers and she is going to come. She's the first person I've heard of on the Westlake Landfill page or the Coldwater Creek page who said she's moving. And she said, you know, I talked yeah. to her. Very briefly, I'm going to really explore her experience on the radio on Monday, but many of her friends think that she's being an alarmist and is being freaked out by people who, like, they really believe that the radiation is just not that harmful. It's not causing that much trouble. She's got three kids who, are, who appear to be okay. But, you know, mm -hmm. they're saying, well, you're being an alarmist. And th it's the social pressure to just accept. It's kind of like the social pressure that the people had in Germany to just accept the Nazis. And just like, it's it's really okay, and we need to, like, go with it. And we are the few who are I'm sure. I'm, I'm sure my parents who died, you know, almost 20 years to the day after the meltdown in L.A. at the Santa Susana Field Lab. And both died within a year of each other of very rare cancers. I'm sure neither one of them suspected nuclear. I'm sure, and I'm sure their doctors never did, and it never oh, got not. documented. That's the thing with the nuclear crimes is it is not being documented. None of it is even being looked at. I mean, they are just but offering they knew. us up. They the knew. Remember, remember what I told you that in the early 60s, all of a sudden, all these huge hospitals started popping up all over the San Fernando Valley. Right. Giant medical centers. Kaiser's biggest one, as a matter of fact. And that was right after everybody had been exposed to that radiation. Yeah. yeah. Uh, somebody knew. Somebody had a lot of foresight. <laughs> well, yeah. It's, I mean, and this is what's going on, folks. They are never going to tell you. This was okay, when does the CIA reveal the truth? And this is the same with nuclear. Fifty years later, 
I just gave you two examples this morning where they held on to the truth for 57 years. You know, we have about, I think, uh, eight minutes left here, Ed, but I really want to go back to this thing about Nelson Mandela. Can you give us any details on that? Because that was really... Yeah, yeah. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. That was really fascinating. So Nelson Mandela spent 26, 27 years in prison because the CIA captured him and handed him over to the, the fascists in his country. That is just an yes, they basically set it up. They told him exactly where he was. They told him exact. They told him exactly what it was going to be. I actually have the story here. Just a minute. Where's the That's okay. The story. So you know, this uh, is the thing about what's what has gone on. And this. Oh, here, here's another one. I must. I must mention that very few people uh, know it was a actually a Guardian expose. You know all of this bullshit about oh Iran can't get nuclear weapons. Mm-hmm. Did you know that George Bush ordered the CIA to give the Iranians blueprints to build a nuclear bomb? Yes, I did know that. <laughs> this is the CIA again. That's right. Well, you know those that nuclear reactor inside of Iran that they're so worried about, that was built by Americans. Very few people remember that one, too. So this right. is why we've had exactly. this... It, vested interest this love hate thing with Iran because we were you know getting going with it and then the Ayatollah went oops you know they didn't calculate the Ayatollah in the whole deal you know or maybe they did well let me give you that let me give you the short version since since you were interested in this how the CIA sold out Nelson Mandela he spent three decades in prison uh freedom fighter blah 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 okay President Mandela come on tell us what the CIA did here um okay Donald Rickard, who died in March, says the U.S. intelligence had a direct hand in Mandela's apprehension. In fact, the former U.S. vice president, vice consul in Durban, who had reportedly was employed by the CIA until 78, said he was the spy who tipped South South African authorities to Mandela's whereabouts en route between Durban and Johannesburg. I found out what vehicle he was coming in and how he was coming. So I turned him in. Wow. Now, they have denied this for 57 years. Well, this really speaks to, this is why, like, I thought this might not be a bad idea to interview you at a half hour left, and this is why, because, you know, I spent a half an hour talking to Dr. Caldecott. It was really, to be honest, the day I interviewed her, I had two and a half hours of sleep. I was really tired. I had actually read that article on thorium two or three times. I've still read it again. I just don't get it, and I was so exhausted, I almost started crying. I was going to tell her I just still didn't understand it, but I was so tired, so I just let it go. But honestly... This issue about the nuclear industry and the CIA, they're hand in hand. They function well, well, together. It is not Well, we know, we, like, we, like we know, let, well, let's give an obvious uh, connection, okay? We, we were talking about the CIA as the world's biggest drug smuggler. Well, they are also the world's biggest nuclear fuel and nuclear material smuggler. We all know Israel has a ton of nuclear bombs. Where do you think they got them? Right. Right. Okay? I mean, they got them directly from the CIA. Okay? All of this stuff, all of this conflict in the world, we taught Iran, we taught Iran how to build a nuclear bomb. We're pointing fingers at all of this conflict that the CIA created. Why? Because the more conflict there is, the more money they get. Wow. Well, yeah. you know, we have a few you know, minutes left. I wanted to give you an opportunity. To, do you have, I mean, your websites, I know you're getting a website up. Do you have a website that's active yet? I know you've been working on that. Uh, not quite active yet. I'm going to have Unstoppable Joy up. But the best way for people to find me, is, since almost everybody does Facebook, is go to Facebook, and I am Ed Oz, E-D-O-Z. So if you go Facebook slash E-D-O-Z, you will definitely find me and my political ramblings. And you can also usually find me on Lonnie's Wall because I do a lot of posts there. That's true. So I want to thank you, Ed, for joining us, and I really do want to thank Dr. Caldecott for her efforts. We did this interview uh, a few weeks ago when Bernie oh, was in was town. Great. And frankly, I'm super excited that they did not steal the vote from us. They couldn't because so many people in Oregon voted for Bernie Sanders. And, you know, just to, I want to give just a little kind of a bit of a rant on this one because I think that while Bernie Sanders is not the end-all, be-all, there's many things, and he has been part of the establishment there's got to be somebody at the head of the state of the United States. And, it, you know, you can't tell me that not having Clinton and not having Trump won't make a difference because it will make a difference. 
I, you know, I'm not so sure. It's, that, you know, I agree with you. I agree with you 100. percent I have a, I, I, you know, I know a lot of people say participating in the system just perpetrates it, but I just can't see that because if people don't vote, it doesn't make any difference. It just works to the advantage of those right. who want to shove the national discussion in a certain direction. I mean, I know Bernie can't go in like Superman and change things, but he can change the national discussion. And, and he can resist. He can resist. He has. He will have the power to resist and push back a bit. Whether the CIA is controlling him and threatens to knock off his, exactly. his grandkids, he can at least resist because they can't murder everybody. That's and frankly, they are murdering everybody with nuclear pollution. They we are now in the sixth level extinction event. So we need to keep remembering that there are dead whales, billions of dead fish around the planet. It's coming for us soon if we right. don't and you and i are not i mean you and i are close to you and i are close to portland and you were just up in portland last what weekend right well i went up to the columbia generating station to yeah, inject ourselves into the break free from fossil fuel campaign we held up a sign that said break free no nukes and we put a break free no nukes northwest because the columbia generating station is literally a decrepit piece of of junk. Oh, I know. I'm going to give a shout out to Levy Halady's interview that I listened to twice last night from the nuclear hot seat with uh, Jerry Pollitt from Washington State. He is he runs Hand for Challenge. I encourage everyone to listen to that interview. He really exposes the decrepit state of Hanford, and it is when people hear that, there's no way we can't get active. So look, we have less than a minute left. Cool. I want I want to thank you, Ed, thank for you, participating. Lonnie. We had a little bit of technical issues on this morning getting us all lined up uh i want to that thank, happens yeah i want to thank my listeners for hanging in there with me you know i'm sort of cutting my teeth on the activism thing and frankly cutting my teeth on the radio show thing so i want to thank you for listening to the age of fission radio show uh we will be back here on friday with call in friday and i hope some of you will call in and have some comments about all the things we've been talking about put your courage beat on now that means do it afraid if you think of an action that you think needs to be done figure out a way to at least begin to do it and you know how, learn get let's learn how to network again i think that's what's been lost so Thank you again. Put your courage feet on. Thank you, Ed Oz, for joining us. Thank you, Dr. Caldecott, and uh, we'll talk with you guys very shortly.